What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and to be real with you, I've been wanting to make this video for a while now. It's no secret that the difference between what corporations want and what the paying customer demands are at odds with each other. We've seen the rise of concepts like radical feminism rampage through industries like movies and video games for years now, getting to such a point that it often feels like the paying customer is more divided than ever before, and constantly at odds with those who make entertainment today. We have wild stories like how one Twitter user claimed Mary Jane Watson was a self-insert in Spider-Man 2 for a writer at Insomniac, which opened a whole other can of worms on the already controversial DNA of that game, which pushed nonsense seemingly whenever they could, especially when you played as Miles Morales. There's so much pandering going on right now, so much us versus them, the concept of right and wrong think, being a topic of discussion that never seems to run out of steam, no matter how much it's debated. So in this video, I'll show you plenty of examples of how woke feminist ideology continues to ruin and dismantle the foundations of what we love, and how these websites and companies refuse to listen to their audience but instead will burn it all down instead of admitting their own ignorance. To start, there was this really interesting article I came upon after hearing discussions on Twitter around it which is from The Atlantic, and it's titled, How to Play Like a Girl. This was a study done around 2016 where LEGO decided to use their brands to understand the differences between what boys and girls enjoy when it comes to playing with toys. And the core question at the heart of this study was, what's the difference between boys and girls? Is there any? And if so, does gender actually affect how one interacts with something like media? It turns out, boys and girls are very different, in incredibly stark ways might I add. What LEGO realized through this study was that when boys play with toys, they don't often look to change what the toy's identity or meaning is. To put it in easier terms, if a little boy is given a Spider-Man toy, it was revealed through the study that young boys would become the character. Meaning when you hand a boy a Spider-Man toy, he evidently can recognize who Spider-Man is. And instead of changing who the character is, the mind of boys instead works to understand and immerse themselves in the fabric of that character. The boys in this study would start talking and role-playing as if they were the toy that they were holding. Boys would also want to learn more about what the toy represented, what its history was, and why it was the way it is. Basically, when little boys were given toys in this study, they didn't change the identity of the toy. They just accepted it for what it was and wanted to immerse themselves in the experience. What was really interesting is that girls, when given a similar toy, did the exact opposite. When little girls were given the same toys as the boys were in this study, they would not roleplay themselves as the toy. Instead, the girls would immediately take the toy and instead repurpose it to fit their own identity. What this means in practice is that when boys play with toys, they accept things for what they are, while girls would often reject the origins and identity of the thing they were holding and would instead look to self-insert themselves as this study proved. Girls, for some reason, could only identify or enjoy something if the property or franchise surrounding it was rejected and molded to fit their own point of view. When you take the concept of this Lego friend study, it starts to paint a worrying yet sober picture when you place it up against media today. For simplicity's sake, let's again look at Marvel Spider-Man 2, a game where Peter Parker is often sidelined for characters like Miles or Mary Jane. And again, like that one Twitter user pointed out that Mary Jane's identity as well as Black Cats are weirdly similar in subtle ways to the writers at Insomniac. The point I'm trying to make here is that the LEGO study isn't something that begins and ends with childhood, but it permeates throughout the lives of both genders at a subconscious level. And it's also why we oftentimes see media that embraces feministic qualities start to resemble anything but what the actual franchise is to begin with. A good example of this is the current state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or comics at large. Before, characters like Spider-Man and others were just that, characters. When writers would be tasked with coming up with stories, oftentimes, let's be real, these were almost exclusively written by men. These characters, whether they were male or female, would be true to their character, or mostly anyway. Because, like the young boy playing with Lego, the adult male usually doesn't believe that he's Spider-Man or Batman. But instead, when writing it, a man will write it from the perspective of that character. 
On the flip side, as you might imagine, female-made media oftentimes is nothing but self-inserts across the board. I Am Not Starfire is a blade and self-insert. Velma couldn't even be the same color of skin. And Mindy Kaling had to make Velma a brown girl, otherwise she couldn't write the character or identify with it. Because, as a woman, Velma couldn't be just Velma. Velma had to be Mindy Kaling in every way in order for her to understand and write the character. The same can be said about Mary Jane in Spider-Man 2, or the myriad of other unfortunate franchises that have been ruined by the self-inserting crowd of writers that plague spaces like Hollywood or video games. Even Rey in Star Wars, or basically every single main female character in a Disney Star Wars series that was controlled and given the ability to exist by Kathleen Kennedy, for example, are all brunette white women who are better than their male counterparts. Which, when you look at these characters like Rey, Jin Erso, even the lady in Solo whose name I forgot, not to mention the new Indiana Jones movie, they are at least characteristically similar to the person in charge of Star Wars when they were created. Kathleen Kennedy's abuse of Star Wars and Lucasfilm is not an accident. The characters made under her watchful eye are all deliberately designed to look and act how Kathleen Kennedy believes she is in her own head. They're all smart, capable women who don't need men to tell them what to do. And in turn, these characters all feel homogenous and uninspired because they are all like their creator made in their image. And in turn, these characters all feel homogenous and uninspired because they are like their creator made in her image. The quality of something like Star Wars has been well documented at this point online. It's gone from bad to worse in the past 10 years and it's still declining. The Marvel Universe is also the same. These properties are all bastardized and contorted because they have embraced concepts like toxic feminism at their core. Kathleen Kennedy is the end game point of those innocent young girls in the Lego study. They, like Kennedy, don't see things for what they are and accept them, but instead can only relate and create things if they absolutely 100% look, act, and sound just like them. This is why so much media today is garbage because it self-inserts across the board, and oftentimes it's done to eye-rolling affairs. I recently attempted to play Alan Wake 2, but the game got glitched at a certain point for me and I can't progress. There has been a patch since, maybe it'll fix it, but I'm busy playing other games now to bother to check. Anyway, that game stars Saga Anderson, a caricature of an FBI agent who often speaks like she's a child, when she's apparently employed by an elite force of the government in order to solve crimes. She's able to come to the conclusion of things with no real reason, oftentimes her ability to reach these epiphanies can quite literally be described as, the voices told me and she's constantly validated by everyone around her, even the self-insert of Alex Casey who's modeled after Sam Lake, who runs Remedy. I've never liked the concept of creators self-inserting themselves into media, and it's bizarre even when people like Sam Lake or Hideo Kojima do it. Because not only does it break immersion, it just seems like a self-jerking move usually. Anyway, the more I attempted to play Alan Wake 2, the less I enjoyed the game. It feels more like a movie than an actual video game, and while I got about one third through the game before it soft blocked me, my experience was pretty miserable. The only time the game was even somewhat interesting is when I got to play as Alan Wake himself, mostly because his gameplay mechanics like absorbing light and changing scenes with writing were admittedly interesting gameplay mechanics. But as soon as I was forced to play Saga again, I would just end up rolling my eyes. Because not only were the unique gameplay mechanics of Alan gone, all I was left with is another Mary Sue character who gets told how amazing she is and comes to conclusions by self-inserting herself into evidence. The entirety of Alan Wake 2's nonsense might be attributed to it being produced and written by a consulting company called Sweet Baby Inc., which is a company designed to help, and I put that in quotations, the gaming studios that employ them when it comes to creating their stories in order to meet diversity quotas. I guarantee you that the people at this company, which are full of women, very likely self-inserted themselves into Saga when they were making Alan Wake 2. Because whether it's Alan Wake, Star Wars, Marvel, Velma, or anything else, it all returns to those kids playing with their Legos ultimately. And I don't need to tell you how many female-led pieces of media keep failing at staggering paces. 
Of course, there are media properties that have done incredibly well, like Harry Potter for example. But J.K. Rowling is likely an anomaly when it comes to female writers as it's very odd of her to make her main character a young boy, when most female writers would instead make it a woman. Look at any young adult novel ever from Hunger Games to Slop Like Twilight. They are all written by women and star women. Some even admit their characters are self-inserts like Twilight's creator has already. And this kind of brings me to a point in this video to prove to you why so much of this woke feminist garbage is in selling and always fails. It's because in the simplest way that I can say it, these products are not being made for consumers or fans, but ultimately exist in order to validate and empower the creator. Things like Star Wars or Marvel these days are a mess because they're not being made for you or I. I mean, look at this article from the Mary Sue which says the Marvel's low box office predictions suggest it's the right film at the wrong time. As the Mary Sue says, they don't understand why the Marvels is projecting so low. After all, in their own words, it has everything people would love, like... Based on the trailers, it also looks like a whole lot of fun. There are heroes accidentally swapping places, meeting lots of kittens, and potentially even participating in a wedding and a musical number. But what the Mary Sue fails to understand is that everything they listed isn't really stuff the male audience would care about. And these concepts are quite literally deathly ideas when you realize that the Marvels has a budget close to $300 million. Because when you spend that much money on a movie, you have to make sure it appeals to everyone in order to turn a profit. But instead, the Marvels is just another after effect of that Lego study. It's not being made for fans. It's simply being made to validate the creatives who made it in the first place. They end their article by saying, However, the Marvels has a lot of things working against it, from strikes to lack of advertising to superhero fatigue. There's also the fact that its lead trio is so new to the franchise, and audiences haven't had much time to become attached to them before the team-up. It will be very disappointing if the Marvels flops, as the anti-woke crowd will insist it failed because it's a female-led film. In reality, the Marvels has so much potential and a female superhero team-up film is long overdue. The Mary Sue keeps proving the theory right. They can't fathom why audiences don't want this movie. It has everything that the Mary Sue wants. Strong bullshit female characters, lots of kittens apparently, dance numbers, a wedding, and no competent male characters of any kind. It's a feminist disaster waiting to happen, and they prove that the movie isn't being made for fans. It's just a $300 million circle jerk for a small group of disillusioned feminists, who can't relate to anything unless it absolutely 100% adheres to their ideologies and identity. So what you're left with is a movie made for no one by people who can't make anything unless they put themselves in it, and that's why it's going to fail. And of course, as they say, the reason the movie will fail isn't because it's a nuclear-level feminist cocktail of ideas, but because the anti-woke crowd will hate it. She means you and me, dear viewer. We're the reason it'll fail. But it's not your responsibility to consume every bit of slop made by these studios. You're absolutely allowed to reject things if they don't cater to what you enjoy, especially when it comes to your hard-earned money. No one is obligated to receive your support or money simply because they exist. And saying the movie is good simply because it's full of women unfortunately keeps proving what I've been saying this entire time. And it's also why so much media fails these days, because the stories and characters don't matter to these corporations, it's just checking lists and quotas. Notice how when the Mary Sue speaks on the Marvels, they don't mention anything about its cast besides the fact that they're women. They don't attempt to advertise the movie because its characters have any redeeming qualities. Like, say, Iron Man's dry humor, or Captain America's sense of justice. It all simply boils down to the only thing that they believe matters which is that the characters in question are women, and they should always be enough in their eyes. But it isn't. This is also why so many things made by Asian creators are killing it, because they instead focus on story characters and quality, instead of just cramming as much diversity and quotas as they can, and then thinking it's enough. Recently, I've been playing through Lies of P, which is an incredible game, and it's great simply because it lets me play without restrictions. It doesn't feel the need to talk down to me or fill my head with politics. It doesn't have only strong women and weak men, but instead it feels believable in its depictions. 
The reason why games like it sold well and are beloved by fans is because they are the complete opposite of what woke companies push these days. I know you want to just be left alone, you want to relax and just enjoy things, without being attacked and given condescending speeches down onto you all the time. Unfortunately, the state of media today is anything but that from a westernized perspective. It's why you're seeing so much turmoil in the gaming and Hollywood space at large. Companies are laying people off like crazy, games are failing like Destiny 2 for example. But it's because Bungie was more interested in forcing as much microtransaction nonsense and checking boxes with their cast when it came to their genders and sexualities, instead of creating a compelling experience that had reasons to bring their players back. And now Destiny is bleeding players and has missed their revenue mark by 45%. Nothing happening to Bungie or the modern comics industry is surprising to me. These are corporations who think slapping colorful flags and pandering side content is enough in order to meet demands. But when the pandering comes at the expense of true innovation or quality control, you end up with multiple industries ran by out-of-touch morons who instead of paying the price, relegate their losses onto the talented people beneath them who don't make the creative decisions. Bounding Into Comics also recently had an article titled How Hollywood Sources Its Writers Is Fundamentally Broken, and it's true. At the core of this problem is that the people in charge of making things are not being chosen due to talent or hard work. As Bounding Into Comics writer Selvier Katic explains, these writers who get hired are more concerned with ensuring their resumes have things like demographic descriptors on their resumes instead of proof of their previous work. What they mean by this is when writers apply for jobs, it's more important to say that you support Black Lives Matter, or woke ideology, or explicitly stating your pronouns and what causes you support, as that's more important to these people than your actual body of work. And that is why shit is so bad. Because you have dozens of people who don't know what they're doing being hired because they meet diversity quotas, when we should be hiring people based on the quality of their work. No longer are things needed on resumes like writing accolades, additional experiences, or life skills. But it's expected instead to tell your employer that you're bipolar, depressed, and house multiple personalities because that'll check boxes instead. There's a saying that keeps ringing true today as it ever did, which is that, dear viewer, the lunatics are absolutely running the asylum. And the people who should be doing anything but creating content and monitoring what audiences want are being given creative free reign to open their assholes wide and drown your favorite franchises in a deluge of woke diarrhea. And it's why with the writer strike going on, many of these writers are getting purged. But once that witch hunt ends, you bet your cheeks that there will still be some weirdos left after the bloodshed has ceased. And all that will end up doing is making those lunatics eventually cling their fingers to another established property only for the company to say, well, we need more writers. And then the mentally ill, socially out of touch, insane people who look to their Discord chats and messages will see the usual insane bullet points in bios from flags, gender identity, and more, and they'll just hire those people again. And the slop will continue to flow like garbage in a sewer system with no end as these morons continue to ruin everything we love behind the guise of social justice. And you bet your ass there will be more self-inserts and more abominations of untold levels coming in the future. There was an article on GQ's website, and I mean was because they got rid of it, and apparently it said, The Marvel's expected to underperform due to incel boycott. As I've been saying, we're in the middle of an ongoing culture war where insulting your audience and calling them loaded terms like incels is perfectly fine, but making media that respects its legacy is anything but. The Lego pieces that resemble your favorite franchises are currently in the hands of insane psychos who have every intention to ruin and mutate them until they don't resemble anything but the core values and image these crazy people see in the mirror. Whether it's toxic feminism, pandering like South Park made fun of, or self-insertions, the absolute state of media today, dear viewer, is cooked. The culture war is not over, and I implore you to speak with your wallet. And if things like the Pandaverse and media made by Asian-centric studios are doing so well says anything, it's that common sense is slowly but surely becoming more commonplace. 
So keep up the good fight, and I thank you for watching. Subscribe and like the video if you like to. Thanks to my patrons as always for their support. And my G Fuel code is available if you want to snag some in order to support the channel. Have a wonderful day. I appreciate you dearly and please take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one.